Devon peeps and welcome to another video using the Jane Davenport mixed media range. Today we're going to play with some tip-ins. My favorite kind of thing to do is create tip-ins for my journal then I can add photographs and things on the backs of them or just have them as little mini works of art. You can also laminate them, turn them into bookmarks, dashboards, postcards. You can definitely do this and send them out. We've just finished up with Inco Rimo, so if you wanted to make more postcards to keep the snail mail love alive you certainly can do that. The product I'm going to feature the most heavily in this video is the Aqua Pastels. They are the watercolor crayons that Jane created for her line and they are absolutely fabulous. Now I will be mixing these with some of the gesso and adding some washi tape, some collage, some journal tattoos, a bit of everything but the main main person in not person the main product that I want to show you is the aqua pastels I haven't seen many videos using these so I thought that I'd showcase them for you today and we're gonna make some creatures of course that is where I like to live in the imaginary realm um, you can also use your mermaid markers to do this technique I have tried this and I also do show you in the video how I've used them in the same way so that if you don't have the aqua pastels you can definitely substitute your beautiful mermaid markers and I am led to believe, I have played a little bit but not as extensively, that if you have the incredible inks, you can also do this same technique with your gesso and the inks. Um, but I don't do that in the video. I generally use the aqua pastels and the mermaid markers. Um, I play a little bit with the tape. We use some of the journal tattoos, like I said, and the obviously the beautiful uh, scrapbooking paper. So without further ado, grab something to work on whether it be a project live card whether it be a scrap piece of card that you've got lying around those giant luggage tags they are the fun things that you're going to create your collages on grab all your bits and pieces of paper and let's get started I'm grabbing a mixture of just scraps of paper that I've used, jelly printing bits of paper, some of the scrapbook paper from Jane's line, also some of those really cool tissue paper that she released in the second release, I think. But grabbing all the bits and pieces, this is a great stash busting project if you've got all those little bits of paper that you hoard. I know I have a pile of them because I am a collage artist at heart, but I generally like to put some of the brighter colors down the bottom and some neutral papers up the top where I know my face is going going to be uh, it just helps a little bit to have some neutral stuff so I have book pages um, I have lined paper but then I use all the poppy colors from Jane's line down the bottom because it gives some really nice visual interest this is a great thing to do in front of the TV it's mindless it's fun and you can create a whole heap together so that you've got some spares just so you can sit down and create creatures all day Now that you've seen that little bit at the start of me collaging one of these uh, Project Live cards, you can also use the really big uh, tabs, you could use watercolour paper, anything, you can cover anything in collage, that's the beauty of collage. Um, so I've used a mixture of uh, plain book papers and some of the really cool uh, tissue paper or the collage papers from Jane. Um, I've also used bits of uh, card that I've used, the mermaid markers and the stamps that I've been experimenting. Um, so obviously some of Jane's beautiful scrapbook paper really does lend itself well. There's so many different colors and textures. Um, also your jelly printing. Um, this was jelly printed on a jelly print using the Jane paints. So there are so many ways in which you can use Jane's stuff and make your own collage fodder. Um, I'm really huge on collage fodder. As you know, collage is one of my main sources that I like to play with and Jane's range really does lend itself well um, to collage fodder. Um, and uh, today we're going to be creating some little creatures on top of the these tags um, I have made them in the past I've used mermaid markers and gesso before so this can be substituted if you don't have the watercolor crayons um, but I prefer to make them with the water, water soluble aqua pastels um, 
so they are fantastic for this sort of thing but I have done it with mermaid markers and if you would like to see it done with mermaid markers I can do, do a separate video but it's the same sort of principle um, but I prefer to use the aqua pastels um, because I just find them easier to work with I have put some of my gesso onto my little palette um, so that is what you'll be using and I also have a Stabilo pencil uh, but you could also use your uh, fountain pen um, with some non water soluble ink so black ink if you want or if you don't want the dark lines you don't have to do that at all you can do it all with the aqua pastels or maybe a graphite pencil your magic wands this is really really interchangeable with your supplies it's, so, it's such a super versatile way to create uh, that you won't have trouble following along with the supplies you have from Jane's range already uh, a lot of Jane's, Jane's range works beautifully together in all different ways shapes and forms that's how she created so that they could be used in conjunction with each other separate together mixed you name it that's the whole beauty of the mixed media range um, so today we're going to be creating on top I may do one or two depending on our time and because I get really pedantic sometimes um, but this one doesn't actually have any of Jane's bits and bobs on it this is just one that I had scrap papers lying around so we're going to pull that out the rest are all been covered in a mixture of uh, graphic papers from Jane's range and also some of the neutrals so I tend to use the neutrals where I want to put the face um, so that's where the book paper comes in and this uh, weird wrapping paper that I've been hoarding. So a lot of Jane's papers have neutral elements in it. So neutral sections that you can draw upon. They're where I tend to gravitate the most when I want to do um, where I know the face is going to be. And then I just sort of play with pattern and color for where their clothing is going to be. Because you're going to do that block out technique that we did in the Funky Flower tutorial. So a lot of the things that I show you guys can be altered and played with. And so this is sort of a tip in idea. You can do this whole thing on your journal page. I just really love to live in tip in land and I feel less pressure working on a tip in than working on a journal page. Um, so this is a great way to use up your scraps to just sort of get all your bits and pieces. If you've been hoarding some of your Jane papers or your tapes and things, I totally understand. This is a great way to use them up while still being useful in your journals. Um, so I'm going to speed the rest of it up because I don't think I could talk you through the whole process with my voice the way it is and I keep bursting out into weird coughing fits so I'd like to spare you from that but uh, let's get started and make some cute little nook dwellers using our gesso, our aqua pastels and the other thing is if you're going to use a brush don't use one of your really nice Jane ones because your gesso might uh, stuff with the fibers so I've just got a crappy brush that I like to use that I don't have any love for so don't use any brush that you uh, are going to want to use later on sometimes because I just like to scrub with the gesso and the aqua pastels so if you're really gentle then use whichever brush but I like to choose a brush that I actually don't care about for this um, because I get really sort of uh, pushy and stuff and get the gesso in and mix it all up so don't use a brush that you're attached to so that's my only um, thing and if you want you can attach your collage papers with your matte medium of course um, I just have run out at the moment so I just use a general glue stick but normally I would matte medium them down um, it, they stick a whole lot better especially when you're adding layers of water soluble crayon gesso and water uh, your papers are going to want to lift so adhere them as best you can to your tip-ins and things and make sure that your tip-in is of uh, like don't do it on paper so just find a semi card surface because it will just work a bit better and won't be as delicate um, so if you make sure if you're using your journal pages you use your collage papers with a bit more thickness that way you've got a nice thick layer that you can watercolor over because these are essentially water color crayons so you're going to be using a wet media so just keep that in mind that is enough babbling from me let's get into making a creature
So I'm using a Stabilo All pencil and that is what I like to sketch out my stuff with. You could obviously use something else but this is my favourite thing to do. And then I'm using the Aqua Pastels in a blue shade and just adding the gesso as I go to help it smooth it out. So I use the water to move the um, watercolour crayon around and then I use the gesso to smooth out that look and sort of help make it uh, sort of opaque up the paper and disappear some of those lines I do love some of the pattern peeking through that's what gives these faces their interest but I do use that gesso a lot and then I come in with one of the uh, darker crayons and sort of outline the body to help give it a bit of definition now sometimes I don't want to go straight in with that crayon so as you saw me I just sort of rub the crayon onto my palette to, and use it like that so add some water to the palette and that softens up the color so there's a tip for you if you don't want to go straight in uh, with the watercolor crayon and create marks you can generally just scrub it onto your palette and then use it like that just add some water and it makes instant watercolor so if you're not too uh, well versed in the old crayon ways but you're really good with watercolor you can definitely do that um, I find that it helps really lighten up and makes them really easy to use that way but I also love using it in the stick form especially when I want to do large areas they are great for that um, and the gesso just helps smooth it all out and give it a more uniformed look I also come in with some mermaid marker because I wanted some really punchy colors that's that starfish color and I also love the lobster color my little creatures are a lot of layering and a lot of smoothing and that's the general secret to them is you just keep layering and layering and layering till you get the shadows where you want them to be and where you get the highlights where you want them to be and you just use that gesso to help smooth those colors out lighten areas up and just soften all the lines it's really personal preference how you go about this i love also adding some quirky hair antlers ears you name it um creatures are just where my heart sings the most and I have so much fun making these little dudes. As I put the finishing touches on these, I wanted to show you another way in which you could make these by starting with your lovely eye tape that Jane gave in the first release. Still one of my top favorites and you'll see me place that down on the collage postcard right there and sometimes I really like to add an element whether it be an eye or a nose and I also look at what my collage behind is doing and seeing if I can work in some of those collage pieces so that bright pink section of collage that is right there smack bang in the face I'm going to use that to my advantage and turn that into a nose and because these are creatures you can go and while as wild and crazy as you want and it will look fantastic there is no right or wrong way to make the nook dwellers they are from your imagination that way no one can tell you you're doing it wrong that is one of my philosophies in life it's why I create things that are imaginary because no one can say that you did it wrong because it came from your imagination so again I'm using the same techniques I am bringing in some of the mermaid markers again I decided to show you guys how they worked with the gesso as well they work hand in hand I'm actually just altering that eye piece of tape so it doesn't look exactly the way it did on the washi tape but that is the beauty of the things that that we do in mixed media we alter and change things to our own liking sometimes your collage elements will lift up with the heat and all the water I just glue them back down it doesn't worry me at all again just layering over and over until I get the desired effect altering the eyes making sure that I've got the highlights in there adding gesso over the top of things and just layering up between the mermaid markers and the aqua pastels if you have either either they work fantastically for this there is nothing in chains I reckon even the incredible inks could do the same if you pop them into a palette and use them with gesso they are so so versatile and that is one of the reasons why I love working with them especially in nook dweller form Sometimes I can feel her arms holding me as forever. 
As a final touch, I like to add some of the journal tattoos, some of the off-cut bits that didn't really make it, all the little bits of pattern work and stuff. They look fantastic on these creatures. It just adds another element, gives it a bit of texture, and why not use all the things on these really fun postcards? So as you can see with a little bit of patience and uh, little bits and pieces of the whole Davenport line I'm actually just putting some of the uh, journal tattoos from the second release onto some of these. I'm just using the end of my pen. Um, they do come with paddle pop sticks but I always lose them so I just use a sort of blunt object and the end of my pen always seems to give good results. And I love adding these, especially the gold ones, um, onto journal bits and bobs because they just add another element of fun. Um, I also really enjoy just sort of putting odds and ends, so cutting them up and taking them. So these little star ones are actually on a mermaid uh, tip in and I like the look of how it looks just like this. And it really just adds something to your actual tip-in. These will become tip-ins and I will probably turn them over and add some photographs or something to the backs of them. I have lots of photographs sort of floating around here. Let me grab one. So I would normally put something on the back, some uh, either watercolor it. I probably wouldn't watercolor these ones because they are so heavily uh, layered and things, but I would definitely add some collage in the background um, and use a dry glue stick and just add bits and pieces to the back and use them as journaling tip-ins for my journals. These are fabulous also for postcards. If you want to create these, you can write a letter on the back and post them off around the world. I absolutely love how you can create something super, super different using the same items. The only difference that I did was I added some of the washi tape from the eyeballs just for a difference to show you how you can use your washi tapes as well. I also moved in some of the mermaid markers to show you on camera how they work with the gesso because I do like working with them interchangeably um, and they are fabulous for getting that really big bold pop of color. Uh, they work great with gesso as well. So I did mention that at the start of the video but I thought I may as well just show you on camera so you can see that these work just as well as the aqua pastels. They are so much fun to work with. They are really, really creamy and break down beautifully with water and gesso. Um, sometimes with uh, watercolor crayons they do leave like a mark and they don't break down completely. I have not had that issue with any of Jane's aqua pastels. They have broken down perfectly exactly how I wanted them to and I totally love how they've turned out and how so different they are when I've done the same techniques with them and you can have a blast just creating creatures and characters and making things for your journal. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to see you guys grab your aqua pastels or your mermaid markers, mix them with your gesso and create some collage tip-ins for your journals. I just absolutely adore seeing how you guys take these ideas and run with them um, and creatures are definitely very close to my heart. So I hope you've enjoyed that. You could also, before I go, I forgot these little, uh, I've forgotten what Jane's called them, comfort tissue. I always get that one wrong. These are great. If my tipping was bigger, I wanted to give them crowns and things and hearts, but these are like uh, washi tape. So they are really um, see-through. I always have trouble because of my talons, as I like to call them. But they are see-through and self-adhesive and they would look great. I might just stick one. Let's put it down here. So they're see-through, so they add a nice little extra layer of something on the top of your thing. Just another added thing that I know that we're all hoarding these. I actually haven't opened these yet because I love them so much. Uh, but I knew that they would be a cute little add-on. I was going to add a little heart and things. But like I said, you can go nuts with these things. I have been pumping up a storm with the journal tattoos. Probably one of my favorite items from this, this collection were the journal tattoos. And definitely the ones that also come in the marbling kit. They were divine. I love mixing them up 
and as you can see here that there is a moon here that actually came from this part of of the uh, journal tattoo and I just used the moon and I will use the frame in my journal later on but I just wanted the moon in there but I, I love it. I love how quirky they are and how different they are. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I cannot wait to see your little nook dwellers on your journal tip-ins. Bye!